hello and welcome back guys so in this video i will show you how to use wireshark okay so uh as you can see all right i will open it again i have already opened it so i will have to show it to you guys as well right so stop and quit so i will just perform a search for wireshark uh move it so that you guys can see it so similarly so if you see over here so you will see that the adapter ethernet is like it's getting some packets sending some packets whereas the other other packets or other interface is like uh, it's just sending out a broadcast you did not receive any response so it's flat right whereas if you can see in the ethernet it's being constantly used right so that means my connection or my uh, system is getting uh, the connection via Ethernet. Okay, so I can go inside it. So as you can see, I have different uh, IP addresses and different sources that I am sending traffic to. Right. So what I will do is I will open up a new tab so that you guys can see it properly. Okay so what i will do is so this is my tab yeah so let's just open let's say google uh, google will have uh, ipv6 address so that's not feasible so automate the boarding stuff with python dot about uh, boarding stuff right so this is a very nice book by uh, i think swagat something else or god or something like that so whatever that is yeah so i will look up the thingy for this okay so let's find out its email address okay so all you have to do is come to your uh, powershell or your cmd then just type in ns lookup then search for automate the boring stuff boring stuff stuff dot com so, ooh, okay, okay, it has both of it. Okay, it has both the address, right? It has IPv6 as well and IPv4 as well. So, what I will do is I will only select the IPv4, okay? So, Control Shift Copy. And then after that, what I will do over here is so, since it is in HTTP, right? So, let's just filter out that particular packet, okay? So test and then let's see. Let's see if our thingy has captured it or not. Our Wireshark has actually captured it or not. Let's see, let's see. Who where are you taking this? We don't want to go over there. Okay, this is again link for Amazon and blah blah blah, right? So uh, uh, all I want to do is just move me to some other places. Okay. So why is it not filtering right now? I think the traffic is flowing from... Uh, I think my packet R going through this particular IP. Let's see. That is also the same IP of that particular website. but is ipv6 okay so it can't really trace it at the moment it's just to tcp okay let's copy v4 address yeah Anyways, I'll just look it up. I'll just look it up. Does not matter for me. Uh, I think it should be in the recent one, yeah. So what was the IP? What was the IP? 208, right? 208, 208, 208. 208. Where are you? 208.
So even though, even though if I don't get that, what I will do is I will uh, let's see this particular stream. Yeah. So all you all you need to do is just right click, click on TCP stream, and then a dialog box will open up. So you don't need to worry about it. So first of all, what happens over here is that so see how many so many packets are exchanged, right? So in the beginning, what happens is that it will there will be some verifications and all as well. Okay. So if you have learned about uh, transport layer uh, or OSA layer, so you will basically see those information. So what information are there, are there in the packet is that first you see a frame. So what does a frame in a frame contain is that it contains the interface ID. So what is my device and also so who is the source? It's my device, right? 192. It's a private public IP, right? So I am sending a packet, right? So as you can see over here, so it'll mention the time. Uh, I am delta from previous capture, blah blah blah. Uh, frame number, everything will be here, yeah. So in frame, all you will have is just the MAC address, or you can just say if, if in the, if this is like L L1 kind of thing, okay? So it's just bits and bytes okay that's all you will see this is the first of the seven layer okay so uh, that's the very first one l1 layer one and then layer two is like you call this a frame okay so this is a frame where what you will have is that so basically you will have a frame which is uh, which consists of two things okay so it will have a uh, MAC address and inside that it will have a data okay so yeah that's how it will look like so similarly this will be like it will contain as a capsule okay it will, it will look like a capsule it will definitely look like a capsule so uh, in the transport layer or you can say in the network layer first of all so you will have uh, the IP so uh, the frame will be encapsulated okay so it will be uh, encapsulated inside what so uh, it will encapsulate this particular frame okay and then if you see over here you will have like all kind of stuff in this as well so you'll have the source ip the destination ip okay so we have not had a look at this thing so let's see what is in a frame so it will tell like what devices I have right so what's the MAC address of my device what's the destination device and what's its MAC address everything okay so all this information will be presented okay so similarly in the network layer what you can see is we are using IPv4 see the version is 4 right so header length that will also contain a lot of data if you go inside it but right now we don't need to look at it okay so flags and all if there are any flags we will definitely it will be raised so if you see over here zero and then one yeah so zero means it's off one means it is activated okay so if you see over here not set result bit is not set don't fragment is set yeah so that means do not fragment this uh, date that's what it basically means okay so after that it contains some kind of uh, protocol what protocol it is using tcp so when do you use tcp when you have a uh, when the communication is such that you don't want any miss in it okay so basically uh, if you are doing a video call right so uh, that's like real time communication right in that case so suppose if you miss a particular packet what will happen is that you won't hear the voice of the other person right whereas in case of tcp like in emails in websites and all so you do have a tcp where like even though if the packet on if it is traveling on its way and if it does not reach the destination then what happens is that it will be recent okay so they will have like uh, acknowledgement and also basically different devices communicate and all so see over here if you see acknowledgement over here it just means that the packet that has been sent by this source to the destination which is our computer it's just saying okay i received it that's all it's just acknowledging itself okay that's what it basically needs so protocol as well you need to know about that as well and then the source destination is here it all lies within what layer 
in the network layer right so l1 l2 l3 and then l4 so this is called a transport layer as well and then in this case as well what happens is so in this case you will have the source port and destination port so now you have the ip and then within that ip as well there will be a port right so it will be uh, it will be it will identify which application is demanding that particular data okay so you can't be like getting data for uh, let's say a web browser in an app right so you, it's just two different things right so that's how it basically works out and then destination port 443 it's like for http so these are like uh, already reserved and already defined so most they are very common but what happens is like uh, they do get a lot of attacks in this particular port and all so what they tend to do is they read out this to another ports and all but we as a normal person on the client side we won't see any of these things okay but what does it consist of so it basically has a source port and destination port on the other side on the left side it has source port on the right hand side it will have a destination port and inside it what what will it contain or it will encapsulate the uh, ip information and within that what happens what do you have over there inside that you have a now you have a packet right so segment will have a destination port source port and inside it it will encapsulate the packet okay so this is called packet so l3 or uh, the, the the data that travels from like uh, the transport layer uh, the network layer is called packet okay so in this case l4 when it comes to l4 we call it segment so what will it have it will have packet encapsulated by the source port and destination port on the right okay so you will have sequence number sequence raw right so it will have basically all the sequence all the flags will be over here so if you see over here acknowledgement has been set right and then you will have payload SUP timestamps as well how long did it take from the last thing and then you have transport layer security as well so in this case it's still uh, the transport layer but uh, here what they will do is they will exchange different kind of encrypted keys and all so that it's secure right so http over tls so you'll have different versions of it tls 1.2 so the data is every data is over here as well okay so similarly if we look at this so it's basically application data right so we are sending it to the server and then the server is sending us something over here okay so let's have a look so see our uh, destination port in this case was 62 586 right so if you check over here when we get the reply it's our destination the destination port the source port was 62 586 in the beginning because we were sending it now the destination port changes right so it has sent an acknowledgement okay right now so it has not sent any data at the moment so let's check the other packet the packet below it so 46 is the other packet that we have received from the server similarly we have all these different packets over here as well so if you see there is different kind of packets over here right so uh, you can filter out have a look at it and then you will basically can get a bit of idea about it okay so if you really want to filter it what you can do is you can just type in tcp dot sr and type in the source port as well okay so if the source port is so you can just type in tcp equals to equals to and then 52.218 and filter in it in this way or you can just filter it by protocol as well okay so if you just do tcp it will just filter out the tcp connections only okay so similarly if you need icmp icmp you just filter out so if you uh, did not uh, enter a correct command what it will do is it will show you see the color it changes to 
red okay whereas if you hit it properly or if you enter the command properly you will basically get a green cell dns you about dns you can type in by different protocols okay so any protocols udp tcp whatever right so you can filter it out like that way as well so similarly you can also filter it by ip address equals to this let's see ip address equals to this uh, you don't have any data over here so i'll just paste some data now you can filter it. See, now now we got it right. So it was not TCP equals to blah blah, but the IP address that we are looking at, right? So we can filter different data as per our need as well. Okay. So see over here. So sometimes they send a hello. So it's just basically nothing else but just saying that okay, I'm. So it's like handshake protocol kind of thing. So it's like uh, it's a three-way handshake. So you say hello, and then the other party says like okay, I'm awake, and then so they sent a, a packet back saying okay acknowledged and then so again we have to send the package back so we send it why do we send it because just to uh, the just to let the other party or the server know that we are live as well okay so you see all the handshakes happen over here so what why do we need handshakes so see they share a lot of uh, key share extensions so they share their keys for private key public key so all the encryption methods are also defined what method will be used right compression method server name what format request status everything okay so what kind of algorithm signature algorithm all these things will be within this particular packet okay so if you see over here so the server is sending us a data something about something right yeah we are getting some kind of data over here so what is this three reassembled okay so i think it must have been misplaced or something so sometimes what happens is that so the load gets too many so you are sending packet 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 to the server and then um, it will basically combine it together and then send it back okay or it will just reassemble it but it happens so quickly that we won't even notice in our computer right whereas if you use Wireshark, you can basically see it. Okay. So server, hello, uh, cipher spec. So it's again handset protocol. So they are just saying like uh, change cipher spec, and then so this is our uh, no. The server is basically telling us to do do few things, right? Or oh, the packet contains that kind of data so similarly if you see over here so if you do follow stream then that will be very helpful because so you see all you will see is the communication between our pc and the server itself so all you have to do is right click follow tcp stream okay that's how you do otherwise you will have like all other kind of ips and all in the middle so that will be very hectic as well right uh, and next thing what you can do is you can even have a look at the state the stats, stats so you can do like input output of ethernet and then you can filter it so you can see how packets are traveling over time or like whether people are actually starting to use torrent and also what happens is that you will have a spike and then it will be constant okay that's how torrents thingy will look like a graph will look like so you can filter it out by packet as well. So for the particular IP, you can just not not only say all IP, but you can define like which IP where the packet is traveling to, everything. Okay, so you can have a look at that as well. Another thing that you can have a look is the protocol hierarchy as well. So Ethernet, TCP IP, and then transport layer contains maximum, right? And then data is 1.3. You can have a look at that as well. Telephony, it's about uh, UDP and all kind of thing. Now you can have a look at conversations, analyze. Uh, you can definitely put in display filters around so that you only see uh, 
the filters that I was talking about the earlier one. All right, those are the picture uh, filters. So if you want the capture to stop, just click on stop. If you want to change the device, just click over here. What is it called? Capture options. And then uh, you can refresh. You can change the preferences as well from here. If you want a dark mode kind of thing, but it does not really have actual dark mode, proper proper actual dark mode. But still, yeah, you can still get some few things done over here. So. Uh, all this text font and also you can customize it as per your need because you will have to be looking at it for a long period of time similarly you can mark it mark a particular packet see the color changes right so you can basically be uh, thinking if it is a suspicious one so like um, some uh, person might be doing some spoofing and all so maybe they are sending some false packet to you so you can identify it as well and then if you have multiple mark packages so you can just move around it just unmark it yeah, both of them so yeah, it's very 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 simple but uh, once you start uh, getting into it you will get the hang of it okay stat endpoints packet lengths that's also interesting thing to look at so see how like uh, there are very small packets and all and then uh, how it changes over time so you will have count average so you can filter it out in that way as well and then it's the length of the packet okay that's very important to think about so if you have large packet packets that are coming in that means like you are uh, basically downloading or doing some kind of heavy uh, data consuming kind of work right so you can have a look around at that as well. Other things, uh, firewall ACI rules, so you don't need to really worry about it much. So you can use this analyze tool as well. And if you apply filters such as and or uh, or not, all this kind of new rules, all right. But it's, it's very interesting, like this gives you a lot of data, right? So whereas if you are seeing it from a power cell, right? So if I just do pin 208.113.217.12, then the only data that you will be getting is just a reply, right? So you want to know like what's happening behind the scene or like uh, whether you're uh, you are receiving the packet but you don't know what the contents of that particular packet is right so whereas the packet will contain all these things so a particular packet contains a frame inside it so the source ip and then the destination ip encapsulates the frame okay the frame will be inside it so it's like a medicine kind of thing which will be in the inside and it will be encapsulated okay encapsulated so uh, when we receive it what happens our system then it decapsulates it so it enters through frame one l1 uh, i mean uh, from the interface then it comes to l2 where it will basically be, you know, basically look at the mac address whether, whether it's uh, for us or not uh, in the beginning and then after that we we'll, uh, check the source destination whether it's our particular ip or not and then it will after that look at the source port where is the source port so where our source port has been open whether it could be chrome or whatever app or something else so it will forward it to that particular port and then after that it will travel up to the session layer where it will a session will be created then it will move up move up to presentation layer from there it will move up to application layer and we see it in our application right so application layer is the layer where a user interacts with the system right so that's when we actually see that content of that packet or you can say like segment whatever right and that's how it happens okay so there is an encapsulation when you're sending it there is a decapsulation when you're receiving it okay so in the beginning what happens applications then send the data then after that you you will also you will put a source port and destination port you will encapsulate it right the data will be encapsulated inside it and then after that you will make it a packet and then after that frame and then after that it will 
move on like that okay so the process is like it just moves from top to down right so encapsulation and decapsulation happens along the way and then basically from uh, L1 you it will be uh, turned into a light signal and then it will travel through the medium or whatever the medium is okay so that's it for today guys that's how we use wireshark it's not too complicated but uh, you definitely need to get a hang of it just the filtering and all helps a lot and then uh, it's a lot about monitoring rather than anything else in substantial way but it just gives us extra information about uh, what's happening in our network okay so that's it for today i'll see you in the next one take care bye bye